Hi guys, how's it going? This is Kevin with KKOA. Back to you again with another one of those how-to money saving ideas. Today's video is going to be a little bit interesting. We are going to try to attempt on the air conditioner to kind of create a little baffle uh, system to uh, direct the airflow to make it more efficient. So this is kind of a little hack or I shouldn't say a hack but kind of more of a air conditioner upgrade to make your air conditioner be more efficient. So come along and follow along and hopefully this works out. Most RV air conditioner systems are pretty similar uh, to this. Uh, this is a Dometic, but there's many other ones that, uh, that are very similar. Um, they have it where there's it's ducted and it actually is ducted throughout the unit. They'll have ducts that go, that go throughout and they'll also have this kind of like a forced air uh, open this up. The problem with doing with this is a lot of time the airflow will kind of leak out and it doesn't put as much uh, pressure or anything else that goes to the ductwork. So we're going to kind of pretty much attempt to create kind of a baffle to where it goes directly into the vents, uh, directly airflow that goes directly into the vents. There's a product out there that does this type of thing. It's relatively expensive, uh, a couple hundred bucks, 150, 200 dollars to do. And we're going to try to create something pretty similar or do the similar thing for, you know, for about 25 bucks. Just so we have a good baseline, I'm going to go ahead and put the fan on low. There's the sound wise. You can kind of hear that it's got the little vents that open up that forces the air down from here. If you want to duct it, have those make sure those are closed off but you can still feel air kind of coming down through there so right now with the fan on low the reason why i did it on low is, is many people they have you know i don't know the different speeds you know medium high low so i just figure everybody has low and we're going to go ahead and this is kind of the typical airflow that's coming out you you can really kind of barely feel it uh it does move around a little bit so i'm hoping that after this mod that you'll see a tremendous difference in in the flow uh, of this. All right, some of the tools that you're going to need to do this modification. Um, you can pick up first. You need to get the like the foam blocks, some foam. This is kind of pretty much kind of like craft foam. It's 11 inch by 17 inch uh, foam blocks. Comes in a seven pack. Picked it up about twenty dollars off of Amazon. Uh, you're going to need some aluminum uh, duct tape to uh, coat or to tape up everything. Uh, a tape measure, generally you should have a tape measure, a screwdriver, you know, Phillips, little box cutters. You're going to need a box cutter or some kind of X-Acto knife or blade. Make sure you have a sharp blade to cut the foam. You're also going to need a ratchet or some sockets, a little 3 8 inch socket uh, to pull out the bolts. And then like a board, uh, I just pretty much have the little shelf board that I had to use to kind of cut the straight edge that I need and also, you know, to kind of cut on. This is some typical tools that you would have, you know, typically with you, especially if you're a full-time RVer. You'd probably have some of these some of these tools. The only other tool that you probably may need would be some shears, some aluminum cutting shears, just because we have to kind of modify the frame that I've discovered. And so with that, these are this is probably a tool that you may may or may not need, but that's kind of what I have here for tools. All right, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and pop the vent off and pop the vent off and pull that out. Okay. You can already see a little different. One thing I noticed just looking up here, you have your high side and you got your you got your return air side. This right here is just the little return air uh, that typically goes back and you can just see to where it's it's not even really attached. It's just kind of this little divider thing is just kind of just sitting up there. Right here what I've even noticed with this is kind of just sitting here. There is all kinds of return airflow that's just blowing and going back into the return air fan. Really, I mean, there's more airflow going back into the return air fan than there is even going to the vents. 
this this typically needs to be pushed more up here but as you can see the high pressure side is just blowing this out so that's a big that's a big problem that I've noticed already I think even just having this closed off it uh, would probably even do better one thing also I noticed different in some of the other you may have a different type of unit uh, but this unit has got this uh, control box that we either need to remove the screws or set that up in there somehow but we need it to, first we need to do is we need to take off these four screws that are right here that hold this cover so we're gonna go ahead and take those off all right now I got the four screws off this should just kind of pop down well, it may unless I've got to pop these off there may be two more screws that are sitting right here it feels like something holding it so yeah it looks like there's probably two more screws that are under here let me see what investigate just took my razor blade knife pop that off and as you can see there's two more screws that are right there. All, right. all right so now that comes off set that aside okay this chamber right here this right here is where you're the actually ducted uh, that it comes as you can see there is you got the duct that kind of forces the air that comes down here the air typically will just kind of stay down in this area and bounce around and before and kind of vortex and everything else around before it actually gets into there and as you can see air was totally leaking out at the top because it wasn't secure i don't know if i could see up in here but that little divider piece that divider wall that goes between the two it's uh completely uh holding that off as you look typically the tape uh in this the tape is kind of coming apart and uh, you can see where it wasn't in there. Now, there's it does create a hole. You can see where it kind of come unstick, unstuck, and everything in here. This can be a problem because it can cause a lot of leaks for it to go back into your ceiling. Uh, also, uh, you know, it's not so much a tape. It may have been good from the factory, uh, you know, but a lot of these are manufactured up in Indiana, Elkhart, Indiana. And so they have, you know, it may have been a different climate. As they tow this down to Texas or Florida or someplace that, that's got higher heat and humidity, it can actually affect the tape from losing its stickiness. And so that, that is a kind of a common thing or common problem. So you really should, you know, if anything, inspect this, you know, quite often and look to make sure that the tape is still sticky and that it's still covering and sticking in there. Uh, areas that are torn and, and that need to be repaired, uh, you definitely need to go ahead and address those to make sure that you're not getting any leaks or anything up in here. We want to fully pressurize and fully seal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove this little center divider wall piece. It's not even foam or anything. It's just a little piece of metal. It's kind of cheesy with some sticky stuff on it. It really wasn't there. All right, I may have to modify this a little differently. I ended up bending or putting this up and I think I can screw that, put that up here in place and that should be fine. We'll have another piece up here that secures it, may even tape it in place, but I th there's enough room to put that control box in place. What I want to do is I want to create a box, create the box that, that goes down onto this and then create this whole box to force that air into the ducts. There's a duct on each side, but in order to do that, I need to do something with this bracket that's right here. So the bracket is is kind of more uh, angled that you've seen at the little foam, the divider wall. So I kind of almost need to take this completely out so I can create a straight, kind of a straight piece that goes up uh, and seal that off. So that's kind of my goal that I'm looking at doing here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the bolts out on the corner uh, all around. I'll pull this bracket down so I can go ahead and modify this piece. All right, now that I got my bracket out, uh, I removed those four bolts that actually, this, those are the bolts that bolt down 
um, the air conditioning unit to the top of the RV. As you go and look, as I see, I see a lot of the tape that it looks like it needs to be redone uh, and, and sealed in here. We want to make sure that, that you don't have any leaks and as you can kind of see the, the tape is it's not really sticking very well. So I'm going to probably go ahead and re-tape or reseal this whole area. But the goal here is we want to create we want to create this here's your duct and I want to be able to have kind of more of you know like a V that forces down in here that'll kind of force the air to to go directly down into here so that's kind of our goal and I'm going to create like a box uh, in here this will end up being mounted up here instead of on that bracket so I did kind of make this area here a little bit bigger so it has more of a flow airflow to kind of go down into to go down into the the vents themselves so we're going to go ahead and do that i'm going to go ahead and tape this up and try to measure out and figure out what we need to do to all right i decided on ours the the tape really wasn't very sticky and there was a lot of a lot of discrepancies so i'm going to go ahead and re-tape and reseal this whole box area we just want to make sure that we have a good seal that there's no chance of leak even going into the attic space or to the vent because if you get any kind of holes or anything you could you really lose a lot of the ac and i don't care to uh over here in the, in the return air side this tape is, seems to be you know okay it's sticking i might redo a little bit of it just to reinforce it but for the most part the return air side is not as critical uh but you definitely want your air conditioned side to go ahead and make sure that it is so uh it's gonna take a little longer but we're gonna go ahead and reseal and retape this whole area and get it ready to go all right, I went ahead and resealed and retaped everything so that way it's everything's all freshly taped. So it actually turned out really good. Uh, paying close attention that all the little holes or little gaps that kind of go in the attic, you want to make sure that you seal them up really good so there's no air leaks whatsoever. So now it looks like we're ready to start modifying and making our little wedge. All right, our first measurement is going to be seven and a half by five and a half. So we're just going to cut this. All right, you're going to want to go ahead and put the bolt. You want to go ahead and screw in the bolt back into the air conditioner. But I need to notch out a little bit around the, the bolt because that's going to go in there like so. It's kind of the force that air down there. All right, now we got the first one kind of in place. You know, we're not really looking for, you know, to look pretty or anything, but uh, this is kind of what you're looking at. That way the flow comes down and, and it goes down. I'll probably just cover this with some tape to allow a smooth surface. Our next measurement we have is seven and a half by four and a half. So that's our next piece for the other side. You may want to have a little bit of a vacuum cleaner because it sure, when you cut this, it makes these little styrofoam pieces everywhere. Okay, so now we'll put our other angle piece in there like so. We're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to put the screw back in on this side so that way you can go ahead and notch it out. But, okay, so now we got the other side in. That's pretty much kind of what we're looking at. We just created this where the air comes in and forces kind of down in here. Now, we could just put, I've seen some people where they just put a straight uh, piece going across here and seal this box, which is really nice. Uh, that would work if you just wanted to put a straight piece of the foam going across. I'm going to do something a little differently. I'm going to create more of like a channel of kind of like a V going down and forcing that air in each direction. So I'm going to just kind of put another another piece of foam going down to the here, up to here, to where that way it just forces it to kind of go down either side. So we're going to go ahead and do that and do what that looks like. Some people may just want to close this off now put the put the barrier here and just have it open and you still have the downward vents but i have opted not to do that i actually i want to do it to where i seal this up good because if you have it kind of coming down it'll kind of create that vortex down there and so the air will just kind of vortex around the thing before it actually goes into the into the the ducts instead i just want to make that little triangle make that little v and kind of force it to go down in there to why I, I just want to take out the little vents all together but however you want to do it if you want to go ahead and just do it at this point close this off and have it where it goes to the vents that's perfectly option you can do that but i want to get as much airflow that i can so that way it, it goes and circulates to the vents 
All right, the next measurement is going to be seven and a half by nine. Uh, with this being a 17 inch, I should be able to get both sides out of uh, another piece of foam. So let's see. So because this is kind of offset, it actually sits kind of closer towards the left hand side. This this angle right here is only going to be seven inches, roughly about six and a half to seven inches, maybe six. So this one right here is going to be six by seven and a half. All right, now that I have this panel, I need to notch. I've got the panel in place. I need to go ahead and notch out for the screw that's going to be here. So I got to cut a little notch as that's going to go off against it. And I got to do the same thing for the other side. All right. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and create this, this little kind of vent in there and then we'll secure that up. If you can see, it kind of creates that little uh, channel and that's really kind of what we want we want to kind of have a channel that, that goes but this is kind of pretty much what we're looking at so we'll go ahead and create that channel um, and tape this in all right guys this is kind of what we want we want to be able to create that channel and as you can kind of see up there it doesn't have to look pretty uh, we're not looking uh, aesthetics because you're not gonna really see up in this area but we want something this to be functional but now it created more of that channel that's going to force that air directly into those ducts okay we're going to go ahead and we're going to modify this bracket and i basically i want to go ahead and create a flat surface going across i'm going to use the existing metal and everything's there so we're going to just going to cut just along these angles with some tin snips this is it's fairly easy some aluminum shears and this is uh, some aluminum so it doesn't it cuts fairly easy to do that so So. Alright, now we gotta create that, that piece that seals right here. This this piece will then seal all this up and make it airtight. That way this whole box will be sealed off. Alright, so now we're gonna fit this in place. Slide it up like so. And then we will go ahead and tape it off and seal it up. It should be good. Alright, now we'll go ahead and turn the fan back on. We'll put it on low, and now we'll check for leaks. Doesn't have any leaks. Let's take a look. Look at the difference. That is unbelievable. I mean, wow, I can feel it blowing out here. That is just putting on low. That's not even a high. And I can feel it just blowing out. Wow. Unbelievable. It's also much quieter. It, it Normally this thing makes a lot of noise blowing out. And you can hardly even hear it. It's pretty quiet. Now we'll just put the bracket. Put the bracket on. And close it up. And I think we're done. It's pretty amazing how quiet that this that this actually is. I'm standing right by it, and you can't even hardly hear it blowing. Actually, it's almost louder feeling blowing out the vents than it is actually in this area. So it definitely has dampened the sound, made it more of a whisper quiet air conditioner. And uh, just the amount of airflow coming out of these is absolutely amazing. If you continue to like this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me that thumbs up. We'll continue to finish this up. But I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on and go from there. All right. Uh, all in all, everything uh, went fairly well. Uh, I do have, I've got enough uh, foam left over to do, uh, I got another four sheets or whatever left over. To, uh, to do another, if you had a secondary air conditioner unit, it had a second unit, you can uh, do this same modification on the second unit uh, with what, what I have left over. But uh, it actually turned out fairly well. Quite pleased. I cannot believe the output of air. It is, it is probably 200% more output of air than what we had before. 
and with AC on it really cooled down pretty quick once we uh, turned it on so hope you enjoyed this uh, video uh, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and please don't forget to hit that little subscribe button and hit that little bell once again thanks for watching another video from KKOA Kevin and Kim Outdoor Adventure bye